Hey, welcome back. Um, I'm glad I escaped. I have a little tickle in my throat, so I hope I don't cough during this, but if I do, I hope you'll excuse me. I'm pretty sure it's not the coronavirus, um, but either way, we're going to do the same thing as we did in the last scene. We're going to read. I'm going to give you the condensed version, and I'm going to type answers. So if you are doing today's assignment, you should have a very easy time filling in that study guide if you've been following along. Um, and I also hope that my segment of my videos uh, works out well for you, that this is understandable. All right, here we go. So we want to know where is Polonius going to hide? Well, we kind of learned that earlier in the last scene, so we're going to go ahead and just fill that in. Polonius is not very creative. He's hiding behind the curtains again, and Hamlet knows he's there. So Polonius is hiding behind the curtains, the heiress it's called in the original text, okay? All right. The queen's bedroom was richly furnished and warm. Gertrude had dismissed her attendants and they had prepared for her for the night, and she sat in her bed, her long hair hanging loosely down to her waist. There was a knock on the door. It was Polonius. He's on his way. Now look here and make sure you don't spare him. Tell him his antics have been too much and take that grace he's been protecting him from the consequences. He went behind a thick tapestry, the curtains. I'll ensconce. I'll hide myself here. Don't forget, be straight with him. Then heard his voice. Mother! Mother! I promise, she said. Don't doubt me. Quick, hide. That's him. Polonius slipped behind the tapestry just as Hamlet opened the door. The tapestry could also be like a hanging rock, but I believe it's curtains in the original text. Now, mother, said Hamlet. He sat down in the bed beside her. What's the matter? So they're having a little mother-son talk. And Gertrude is telling him that, you know, look, you've offended your father. It's his stepfather. And that's who she's talking about is his father. He says, you have offended my father, referring to his actual father, because she has married his father's brother. So it's all this little, like, sort of snippy, double-tongued stuff. Hamlet's very upset with his mother still, and he really doesn't wish her any kind of goodwill at this point. So they go on. She says, you're answering the loose tongue. So he's, he's about to get slapped here. What now, he said. Have you forgotten me, she said. Not by the cross. I haven't. You are the queen. Your husband's brother's wife. And so there he goes again. And I wish it wasn't so. You are my mother. She got up and said, I'll get someone who can talk to you. He caught hold of her arm and pulled her back in the bed. Come here. Sit down and you won't budge. So he's keeping his mother captive. And it's at this point, she tries to get up, and he pulled her down again. He's doing it on purpose, because he knows that somebody is spying on him. And it says, what are you going to do? She said, you're not going to murder me, are you? Help, help. And then Polonius gives himself away. What's going on there? Help. Hamlet sprung and drew his sword. He went swiftly to the tapestry. Hello. A rat. Dead for two God. Dead. He thrust his rapier clear through the tapestry. Polonius fell. Oh, I'm killed, he groaned. Gertrude screamed. Oh, God, what have you done? I don't know, said Hamlet. Is it the king? Gertrude fell on the bed and sobbed. Oh, what a rash and violent thing. A violent thing, he exclaimed. Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry his brother. As kill a king? Yes, lady, that's what I said. He lifted the tapestry and saw Polonius' body. He stared down. You poor, rash, intruding fool. Farewell. I took you for better. Accept your fate. He's not really sorry that he killed Polonius here. Some of you mentioned it in your reflections on Act 2 or early on Act 3. This is where it actually happens. Be quiet. Sit down and let me wring your heart because if I can, it has any softness. Anger welled up in her. What have I done? Something that smears the grace and blush of modesty calls value a hypocrite. So now we finally get to the answer to question 2. Right here, he takes the two pictures and he compares... Hamlet compares his mother's first and second husbands. And one is definitely better than the other. All right, so they get done. They talk about the portrait. And he tells her how bad this is and how he's, she says, you turn my eyes into my soul. So now she's like, okay, I see what I've done. And he tells her, look, don't. Don't go to his sweat of a lecherous bed, student. Don't go sleep with him anymore. Okay. And then, as he continues, etc., etc., he sees 
the ghost of his father right here. Gertrude sat up and watched him stare in the gulping air. Alas, she said, he's mad. Hamlet sees his father's ghost, presumably because he was the only one around that's not guilty. Okay, She thinks he is mad or crazy, as we would say in today's world. What does Hamlet tell the queen to do? He tells her uh, to not sleep with Claudius anymore to keep from heaping sins upon her. Who does Hamlet kill? We learned that early on. Polonius. Where does Hamlet have to go? Well, guess what we answered in the last part. Hamlet has to go to England. And he needs to do something with the body. So what he does here is, right here, uh, I have to go to England. I had forgotten. It's been decided. The orders have been sealed, and my two schoolfellows, who I trust as much as po poisonous snakes, are going to escort me. So what he does is he grabs him by his ankles, and he draws him into the other room. Hamlet drags Polonius out by his ankles to the next room. And there you have it. Act 3, scenes 3 and 4, and the whole study guide completed. So if you happen to log on here and you notice that some of your friends aren't logged on here, spread the word. This is going to be an easy day for you.